Hi, I'm Susan Ball from the University of Alabama at Birmingham. And on behalf of my co-investigators, I'm happy to share the interim results of a phase one multi-center open label study evaluating the clinical activity of BMS 986393 in patients with relapsed refractory multiple myeloma. CAR T-cell therapies targeting B-cell maturation antigen have proven effective in relapsed myeloma. However, patients continue to relapse and therefore additional targets for CAR T-cells are needed. GPRC5D is an orphan receptor that's expressed on multiple myeloma cells with limited expression on other tissues and has an unknown physiologic function. Here, we present the updated safety and efficacy data from the dose escalation and dose expansion of BMS 986393, a GPRC5D-directed autologous CAR T-cell therapy in patients with relapsed myeloma. Eligible patients on the study had relapsed refractory multiple myeloma with at least three prior lines of treatment, including a proteasome inhibitor, an immunomodulatory agent, and a CD38 monoclonal antibody. Patients had to have disease progression within 12 months of their last treatment, and B-cell maturation antigen or BCMA-directed therapy was permitted. The dose escalation occurred from 25 million to 450 million CAR T-cells using the modified toxicity probability interval model with at least three patients per dose level. The primary objective was safety and tolerability of the agent, as well as establishment of the recommended phase two dose. As of March 23, 2023, 67 patients have been treated so far. These patients have received a median of four prior lines of therapy, with almost 54% of patients having higher cytogenetic abnormalities and 42% of patients having extramedullary plasmacytomas. Almost 45% of the patients have received prior BCMA-directed therapy, with the vast majority, 23 of the 30 patients receiving anti-BCMA CAR T-cell. 78% of patients on our study were triple class refractory. BMS 986393 showed a favorable safety profile, with most of the grade 3 and 4 toxicities being primarily hematologic, which is consistent with CAR T cells overall in relapsed myeloma. The maximum tolerated dose was not exceeded. The non hematologic toxicities were mostly lower grade. High grade infections occurred in about 15% of the subjects. Cytokine release syndrome was a seen in 87% of the patients with a median time to onset of three days and a median duration of four days. Most events were low grade with grade three or higher CRS occurring in about 4% patients. One patient died of a grade five CRS event at the highest dose level. Macrophage activation syndrome or HLH occurred in about three patients or about 4.5% of all subjects. Immune effector cell-associated neurotoxicity type symptoms occurred in about 10% of the patients, with high-grade events occurring in 3%. All of these events were reversible both with and without intervention. Non-ICANS type neurotoxicity appeared to be dose-related, with dizziness occurring in about 10% of subjects. One patient had a grade 3 dizziness, which had improved to grade 2 by the time of data cutoff. Other neurotoxicity events, such as ataxia, gait disturbances, paresthesia, dysarthria, were seen in a small number of subjects, all were low grade and showing some signs of reversibility. Most of the on-target off-tumor toxicity that affected the skin, tongue, and nails were low grade and 77% patients did not require any intervention. In the efficacy valuable analysis of 52 patients, the overall response rate was 86.5% with a complete response rate of 38.5%. The lowest responses were seen in the 300 million cohort. However, this is the cohort which was very enriched for patients with extramedullary disease and high disease burden at baseline. Among patients who had had prior BCMA-directed therapy, we continued to see excellent overall responses at 76%, with 36% having a complete response by the time of data cutoff. The follow-up of the higher dose-level cohorts is shot, but the responses appear to be deep and ongoing. And where efficacy and MRD were both available, all six of the available patients were MRD negative at month three. 
The pharmacodynamic analysis showed that soluble BCMA, which is a marker of tumor burden, was decreased at all dose levels. And after adjusting for the baseline tumor burden by soluble BCMA, all dose levels resulted in a comparable median soluble BCMA reduction. The pharmacokinetic profile showed fast expansion and multiphasic decline following IV infusion, with a median time to peak expansion of about 10 days. There was evidence of dose-dependent increase in cellular expansion. So in summary, in this first in-human study of BMS 986393, we see a manageable safety profile, as well as deep and durable responses across all dose levels that were tested, including in patients who had prior BCMA-directed therapy. Overall, we tested doses from 25 to 450 million cells, and MTD was not exceeded. CRS and ICANS type neurotoxicity was mostly low grade, and higher grade events occurred at the higher dose levels. Treatment related non ICANS neurotoxicity were mostly low grade, dependent on the doses tested, and have already shown signs of reversibility so far. The overall response rate was 86.5%, and the complete response rate of 38.5% across all doses, and was 76% with a complete response rate of 36% in patients with prior BCMA-directed therapy. All of this preliminary data supports this anti-GPRC5D CAR T-cell therapy with BMS 986393 as a potential treatment option for patients with relapse myeloma, regardless of their prior BCMA-directed therapy status. And further development planning is ongoing. Thank you.